Dr. Terry McLaughlin. She is with the uh, Breast Cancer Surgeons of Texas. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Aren't you a little smiley thing today? Well, I, I'm actually very excited. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad to have you on the show, and I'm really glad that I pronounced your your last name correctly. Yeah, me too. Because I usually go like O for twenty. Yeah. With, on on all these last names, but anyway, we're glad that you're here. Let's let's get some headphones on you real quick. Let Let's talk about the stats real quickly, and I've got yeah. them in front of me. But one in one in eight women will develop breast cancer in their lifetime. That well, yeah, but you got to consider that's over a lifespan of 84 years, not 60. Okay. So if we live out our days, it's like something eventually gets you. For men, it's usually prostate cancer, and for women, it's breast. H- have the numbers come down at all? It just seems like with all the research and funding and, and all this medical advances, or have we trimmed that yeah. down at all? Actually, we the incidence has come down, but it came down around 2002, 2003, when there was the publication of the Women's Health Initiative trial that showed excess breast cancers with hormone replacement therapy, there was like 20 million less prescriptions written for hormone therapy in the next year, and there was a a corresponding drop in the incidence as well. However, since then, it's been pretty stable. So, so we're we're lower than we were, but we're we're still we're still flat. Let's talk real quickly about the Breast Cancer Surgeons of Texas. Let's talk about the, the organization. Yes. Well, I can tell you that that represents me. Let's do it. Okay. Yes, I'm an army of one. Yeah. Tell me your story. How how did you get into what you do? Uh, did you, you know, always want to be? No, a, no. I, I, can't, I can't say that. Okay, but in medical school, if you're really good at anatomy, people think you want to be a surgeon. Sure. So um, I spent a couple summers teaching anatomy for the dental students and those who had to take uh, gross anatomy again over the summer and actually got pretty good at anatomy. So when you rotate through general surgery, the surgeons think that you're smart because you know the anatomical location of everything and they pay more attention to you. Gotcha. And so I'm like, I got interested. The more people are interested in you, the more you get interested in what they're doing and because yeah. they, they give you more attention. Yeah. So you get, you get a lot of personal satisfaction out of helping women. I do. But, I mean, without a, without a doubt, it's got to be rewarding. Yeah, it is. And know? it's immediately rewarding. It's yep. not in a few years. It's today. Yeah. In fact, I'm just coming back from surgery just now. So oh, I, wow. Boy, I'm not. Uh, well, I definitely want to hear more about that because we talk a lot about on the show about people who are in careers that that really they get self satisfying, not yes. just money, right. not just all the the oh, wars no. and stuff. Oh no, that's nothing. Uh, I'm so happy when I get up in the morning because I know that every day I'll get a new challenge. Mm-hmm. It's in the same ballpark, mm-hmm. but it's going to be a different situation, a different patient, different scenario. I want to learn, and after on the other side of the break, who's at higher at risk of okay. getting breast cancer? Right. Is do we have any ethnicity? Do we have ages? Because yes. uh, I know that I have kind of my stereotype thinking of who, who gets breast cancer. I, yeah. ha- I have that. Right. And I want to talk about, like, what can someone do right now if they're listening to us or maybe they have a loved one and they're like, you know what, we have a family history. And what yeah. can they do exactly to prevent themselves from, uh, from you know, being, a, I guess, a, um, a casualty of, sure. of breast cancer? Uh, but but gotcha. it, I know there's a, there's a survivor rate. There is a survivor rate, and it's good. And there are, I call it my top five. My yeah. top five, you know, like uh, David Letterman has his top five things to sure. do to whatever. Mine are the top five things. If I've only got like 10 minutes to talk to people, I say, I'm going to hit these five things and do these, and you're going to reduce your risk. I, I definitely have to hear that. Mm, I got, definitely have to hear you. that. We're so glad you're with pen us. Pen and paper ready. I know. Pen okay. and paper is ready. <laughs> uh, the website, uh, breastcancersurgeonsoftexas.com. Breastcancersurgeonsoftexas.com. Located there in Plano yep. on West Parker Road. Uh, we'll talk more with her about that. Plus, if you're in the job market, uh, or perhaps employers, hey, looking to hire. We'll talk about the trends. We have an expert on the show as well. Plus, it's just Tuesday. We like to have fun on Tuesdays, and I was off yesterday. I'll recap a little bit of my trip to Austin. we will do all of that on a Tuesday edition of The No. Stick around. Get ready to peel back the curtain of truth. The people, places, stories, and events that make up our lives. From Wall Street to your street, get ready. It's time 
for In the Know with Brian Glenn. First of all, very few people listen to your radio show. That's the good news. All right, let's do this thing we call the 4 o'clock hour. Welcome, everybody. 404 on this 30th day of July. And we are talking breast cancer awareness. And I think I know we always, you know, celebrated, obviously, with peak ribbons and things like that in October. And that's great. Right. But here on the show, we're going to do it today on this 30th day of July. In the studio, I have Dr. Terry McLaughlin. Hello. She is with the uh, Breast Cancer Surgeons of Texas. Yes. Located there in Plano. Yes. Uh, we were having a discussion in the break, and I, I made this widely assumption that I thought People, older people got breast cancer. Yes. And it was a 50 plus is what I defined as old. That's not true. Yes. Older people do get breast cancer, but younger people get breast cancer as well. And one thing that I didn't mention is that most women with breast cancer don't have a family history. Now, that's interesting because I would think that, you know, if you had a family history. uh, Yeah. It does increase your risk. It does increase your risk. However, the converse is not true. Not having a family history does not reduce your risk. Huh. Okay. That's it, an interesting. It is. You see huh. what I did there? Yeah. 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 So let me ask you a question. As a doctor, you yeah. know, all this promotion that breast cancer awareness gets in October. Yeah. Has that helped the research efforts in either fundraising or just public awareness or just for, to get women to do self-examinations or get, to go to the doctor? Has that mm. helped, do you think? Mm. Or are we still just trending I mean, I'd love you to say it's been wonderful. I would love to say it, too, but full truth, I I don't know. I think it kind of comes in and out of fat around October. It kind of gets on everybody's radar, and then it kind of fades to black again, and people get busy. Women are so busy. Uh, We're we're multitaskers. We're doing everything for everybody else, mind you. Yeah. And so a lot of times our health goes on the back burner, and so October kind of brings that to the forefront, and then next thing you know, it's December again. But okay. it's for technology's sake. Have we advanced mm-hmm. our technology any more to fight this? Oh, absolutely. Really? The treatments okay. are phenomenal. Um, okay, so back to when we were talking about the incidents and the trends and so right. forth. So the, the incidence is pretty stable. However, the mortality rate has dropped. Okay. People are surviving more mm, with breast cancer. It's not a death sentence anymore. It is absolutely not a death sentence. In fact, if women are screened... And uh, they are diagnosed as stage one and two. They have close to 100% survival potential. I mean, of course, not everybody's mm-hmm. going to have that. But, again, that is phenomenal. I mean, 90% is a good, good number, mm-hmm. too, but it's even higher now. That's because of a combination of screening, and we have better drugs, for better medication, and then better support for said medications. Okay, let's break down uh – Racially, does it have any particular race that gets it more than others? Yes. Uh, Let's go down. If you don't mind, I'd like to break it up in terms of years. Okay. Okay. So up until about 2013, the incidence of breast cancer was always higher in white women. Always. Okay. Then would come African American, then Hispanic, and then last would be uh, Native American women. However, in 2012... The curves merged between African American and white women in terms of incidence. It's not exactly the same, but the gap between them has definitely decreased. So the estimated estimate, the estimated incidence for Caucasian women since 2013 is about 124 cases per 100,000 women, whereas that of African American is 122 per 100,000 patients. So that gap is closing. Mm-hmm. Now I don't know if I can speak to why, but that's what we're seeing. So so you got African American and white women leading the pack in terms of incidence. And then there's a gap and then mm-hmm. there's Hispanic mm-hmm. and uh, Asian and then Native American women. So uh that's one uh, sort of separating point in breast cancer incidence. But the other one is age. The average age of breast cancer is 61. The biggest risk factor regarding to uh, breast cancer is aging. Aging and being female. Two so the older you get, nothing. the older you the get, higher the, the rate that you might, percentage that you might get it. Okay. That's correct. So you keep living. It's almost like, almost a mathematical okay. starting here. Let's, let, let me ask you this. Uh, would... 
with somebody that's socially economically challenged mm-hmm. be a higher risk because they maybe they don't have the the access to go get public to get you know free for screening uh, screenings and things so like that. um I, that's a very good question because this has been talked about over and over again so we have found that even upon even when you uh sort of level out the ground for a screening that there is a still a, a persistent difference in the ethnicity hmm. so Stage per stage, African-American women are going to be diagnosed at a more advanced stage than white women. They're going to be have a higher mortality than white women. And those reasons are multifactorial. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you want to get into mm-hmm. those, but one of them is, is that treatment, even though they may be offered treatment, sometimes they may not follow through with it, or there are associated uh, limitations socioeconomically that do not allow them to get the treatments that they need to get. And even when they get that, there's a lot of cultural biases against traditional medicine, I think, in the African-American community. Hmm. Um, a big reliance on faith. And faith is important, but, you know, I'm a, I'm of the faith that, you know, God gives us tools uh, to do his will. So yeah. uh, I... they can work together, hand in hand. Amen to that, Dr. Terry. McLaughlin is in our as our guest in the studio. We were talking uh, breast cancer. Now, you, earlier you said you had five things that yes. uh, you'd like to go kind of the rundown. Let's, yes. let's touch up on this some of those. This would be my top five things of things to do to reduce your risk, like immediately, immediately. and not just from breast cancer, but just a lot and of cancer a lot in general. Of okay, in I general. have a feeling that Ben Luke, we're about to hear that our diet is probably a pretty big part of this. No, I, I'm you just, think I'm so? Just, I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Well, I would say if I were going to rank these importance, smoking would be the first one. Okay. Smoking is a no-no. I mean, worldwide. There isn't a cancer in your body that is not hastened by smoking. Okay. Mm. So let's just start from the lips. Okay. We can start. And you know, a lot of people are smoking cigars now, and they're like, well, I don't inhale, you know, so it's not the same as cigarettes, but that's not true. Because you are contacting the nicotine with your lips, your gums, your tongue, your oral pharynx, your esophagus, your stomach, your duodenum, pancreas, mm-hmm. or bladder. Mm-hmm. I just quit uh, uh, smoking cigars. Everything that everything that, that tobacco juice touches is going to be at increased risk for cancer. Okay? Not to mention lung. forgot lung as well. So if you can decrease smoking or quit altogether, that's a huge Reduction in risk. All right. Number two, and not necessarily in order anymore, okay. uh, would probably be alcohol. So, you know, again, everything in moderation. Sure. So mm-hmm. safely, most people can consume about one drink a day for women, probably two for men. And when we say drink, we're talking about, you know, six ounces of wine or 1.5 ounces of liquor. I'm doing pretty good so far. How yeah, about no, you, so I'm good. I'm good. I don't smoke, <laughs> yeah. and I think I maybe have a drink a month yeah. for okay. the most part. Yeah, totally. I'm good so yeah, far. You're good so good. I'm good so yeah, far. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, and there are some people you know who come home after work, and they, they do a half bottle. Mm-hmm. I, I've got women that tell me I drink two glasses of wine yeah. every night. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, well, and, uh, can you make it one? Can you yeah, know, one. And say, stop it, just one. And that's maybe. not good, right. by the way. Yeah. Okay, so that's two. Number three. Uh, control your weight. All right, I'm out. Got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Got to control your weight. Obesity increases the risk, and I'm I'm speaking mostly for women now. Um, that postmenopausal increase, it, postmenopausal obesity mm-hmm. contributes to the incidence of breast cancer, and I'll tell you why. And so, what age is a menopause? Then? Is that 40s? average age is fifty three. 53. Average. Average okay. age. So then uh-huh. after that is really when your your stats go up. It, it's Yes. Because your weight goes up. They do go together, but it doesn't have to be okay. that way. Okay. But even if your weight stays stable, your risk, your risk for breast cancer goes up after, okay. as you age. Okay. However, compounding that, mm-hmm. being postmenopausal and being obese, mm-hmm. BMI, 40, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and, and if, if you look around the United States, um, the BMI is kind of getting up there in terms of oh yeah it's, are we the highest in the world uh we're right up there, we're right up there. Yeah. texas is definitely hey. one of the fattest states well, we're if we definitely want to go the number highest. one let's be just be number one let's be number one <laughs> something and texas is number one. <laughs> you know let's just be and number i think one. houston is number one in obesity i think it is too they're, yeah they're ahead of us so. um yeah. san antonio is pretty high yeah but we're, we're doing our best though, okay to stay in the running um so so far we Dallas. got smoking yeah. alcohol 
Obesity. Obesity. Now, what happens with women postmenopausally is that they're no longer put, picking out estrogen from their ovaries so Correct. much. They are converting it from fat mm. that they have that gets converted to estrogen. The whole okay. system's turned upside down. It really, is. it the, really has. The huh? fatter you get, the heavier you get, the more estrogen levels you're having, and so that increases your risk. So control mm. your weight, and how do you do that? Which is my segue to number four. Luke Sinclair, drum roll, please. Diet. Exercise. Exercise. There you those go. Are, those are closely linked, okay. diet and exercise, okay, because we actually have data that shows that breast cancer patients who exercised 20 days, 20 minutes per day, three days a week, reduce their risk for breast cancer recurrence by 20%. Wow. And that's all comers, whether they were thin or whether they were heavier. They reduce their risk by adding exercise. So it does something for us in addition like to that. controlling our weight. 20 like minutes that. a day, man. I like 20 that. Minutes. I can do that. And, it, and it doesn't have to be extreme. You don't have to go get a trainer. You can be, it can be a brisk walk. It can mm-hmm. be a jump rope. Yeah. Um, I love it. Uh, Dr. Terry McLaughlin is our guest in the studio. The website, Breast Cancer Surgeons of Texas, breastcancersurgeonsoftexas.com is the website. We'll take a quick break, we'll come back, yeah. and we'll get yeah. your thoughts on a couple more things. Okay. And I, especially, I want to, as far as the reconstructive options yeah. that women have, I want to talk a yes. little about that. Plus, if you're looking for a job or you're a headhunter, you know, if you're trying to Hire some more people on your staff. We've got uh, advice on how to do that. Listen, 620 AM KXP, your experts in business. From Wall Street to North Texas, this is 620 AM KEXB. All right, welcome back. 421 on this Tuesday. We have in the studio Dr. Terry McLaughlin. Make sure I said it. There we go. That's right. Uh, from Breast Cancer Surgeons of Texas. Okay, we left. We were doing our top five. We want to add another one to that list before we go into the next subject. And, and that yes. last topic was the last thing I want to point out was screening, 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 and okay. and and again, this can go for all cancers: colon, breast. Just get screened. Just get screened. Yeah, get screened. And and screening mammograms still is our best defense for early detection and having a great outcome uh, for breast cancer. And so, that's with everything, right? Skin cancer. It is. I remember going it to the doctor is. for something not what I end up walking out with, mm-hmm. but you know, I didn't know that was coming. Right. So just just go to the doctor. Just go. And you know what? We're seeing even with insured women, less women screening. Even with yes. insurance where they give you one free Absolutely. screen. Absolutely. Where you get one free every year. And I think the reason that is it's because there's some confusion about the recommendations from the national guidelines. So right. there, you know, there's some of the guys, guidelines that said maybe start screening around 50 okay. or talk to your doctor. Or maybe you can do every other year. Okay. And sometimes people go, you know what? I don't think they really know what they're doing. I'm just not going to do anything. Okay. So that's not right. The um, American College of Surgeons, the American Cancer Society, uh, the American Society of Breast Surgeons. I don't, I don't know about the ACS, but the American Society of Breast Surgeons, of which all the good breast surgeons are a part of. We strongly recommend screening starting at 40 annually. There you go. What do you have to lose? Yeah, what do you have to lose? Your life if you don't. There you go. (laughs) PSA brought to you by Luke Sinclair. Nailed it. (laughs) Um, Okay, let's talk about the options that women have. uh, The diagnosis. Absolutely. When Mm -hmm. when it's all said and done, you go through the treatment, you kind of get your, maybe your your body, yourself back together. Right. So some women choose to have a, a breast removed rather than a lumpectomy, which is saving the breast. And we are seeing actually a spike in the number of patients getting prophylactic mastectomies Mm -hmm. just because they want to. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have two options for reconstruction. There are two broad options. Uh, They can remove the breast and not reconstruct, or they can have reconstruction that is started immediately at the time of surgery. It's done by a plastic surgeon. They would would have met ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And we do sort of a tag team approach. I come in. I remove the breast tissue, leaving the skin envelope. We call it a skin sparing mastectomy. Mm-hmm. And then the plastic surgeon comes in behind me, and he starts the reconstruction process. Wow. Most of the time, it starts with a tissue expander, which is a flat balloon-like substance that you you uh, they're able to in, inflate. It mm-hmm. sounds kind of barbaric, but you inflate yeah. it in mm-hmm. the office uh, over two or three months. And then the actual implants are placed, the, the soft, gushy ones mm-hmm. are placed, or they may choose to get what they call a DIEP flap, 
which is using the patient's own tissue from the abdominal area and relocating it to the breast area. The reason that's popular is because patients get a tummy tuck out of it. <laughs> there Why you not? go. Hey. <laughs> nice. Right. Two for one. And insurance <laughs> covers it. Oh. According to the state of Texas, patients have the right to have symmetry. Oh, I like so that. So if one breast is removed and you got another breast that's maybe it's not quite as perky as the one they just made, you can keep it, but you have the right to have it lifted so that it's right. a match on the other side. What what can we, as we kind of close out this conversation, what, what can we let our listeners, what do they need to know right now? If they perhaps they've had a family history right. or maybe they don't, like you said earlier, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. uh, what's the message that we can send to them right now to get them into your office, go get them screened and, and really just it kind of, wouldn't you want to have a peace of mind mm-hmm. that you've had that screening done? Yes. Uh, I think one of the fears is that mammograms may cause cancer and that's not true. So let's, Let's get that out there. That's a myth. Okay. That's that is myth. not true. That is not true. You get as much radiation from mammograms as you do from flying from here to New York. And some people fly every day. Who right? would spread that type of misinformation? You know uh, what I'm saying? Like, who would bring that? Who would want to spread that factually? I don't proven? know. It's on the Internet. And, I got you. Know, you. It's, okay. It's, you've got the, the, uh, the ones who want to be more... More vegan, more natural. I, no, no. I, I'm mm-hmm. with you. It's it's the it's the anti vaxxers yeah. yes. of the world. Yeah. They're it, saying you exactly, know. and they I can find a reason, you know, that uh, screening is is not good, and that the doctors just want to make money from you all, and it's not good for you. It, all of that stuff keeps people away, and it keeps Terry, our mortality we're with you on that. higher. We, we're, here, we're 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 filling yeah. you. Yeah, and they're, exactly. they're also the people that want to store Area 51. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same group. All right, so uh, so that's your message is basically go get screened. Go get screened. And then come see me. Website, once again, for you. Is Breast Cancer Surgeons of Texas. Yep. Dot com. That's it. You uh, can just Google my name. Michael and Google your name. Other, other than that, life is good for you. Life is good. You're excellent. nice and bubbly, happy. I am because I'm doing what I love I know you, every day. I know. You're saving mm-hmm. life, making a difference. Yeah. Today that's I was what, in surgery. I, this is surgery is my happy place. So an hour, an hour, let's just say two hours ago, you were where? You were in surgery? I was in surgery. And I was actually doing a new procedure um, that I just want to throw this out there real quick. So in order to understand why I'm so happy about this, you have to understand how things were. I've been in practice for nearly 25 years. So when we would do a patient who needed a cancer operation and she has a mass that's not palpable because she found it early on screening mammogram, the day of surgery, she'd have to make a little pit stop at the imaging center and have a wire stuck into her breast where the previous biopsy was done. Mm Mm-hmm. It causes anxiety. It's not sure. fun, and it's all it. It would delay the OR many times because we're waiting for them to come from the women's center the morning of surgery. Well, with this technique called Savvy Scout, it eliminates all of that, and it allows the little grain-like clip, size of a grain of rice, to be placed maybe up to ninety days in advance, and it it's sonar lucent, you know, like a subway. Oh wow! Well, well, yeah, it emits. It, it can be found by sonar technique. And interoperably, I can find it, and, and, and there's a little handheld probe that has upticks when I get close to it. So it goes, Look at that. like, you're here, you're here. And the patients can just get it all done while they're asleep. Look at that. That's Technology. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, we certainly appreciate your time today. Yes. Like, we really do. Thanks you're out for there having making me. A dip- well, you're out there making a difference in the world, and we are Happy for that. Breast Cancer Surgeons of Texas is the website, dot com. Yes. Go check it out. All right, we'll take a break. All right. We'll be back. You're listening to 620 AM KEXP, your expert in business. Six twenty AM KEXB. Experts in business in North Texas.